hello world crypt uh, example that I gave you in the in the class. I've loaded the program into IDA so you can see the disassembly here for the entire program and what it contains. And what I'm going to do is convert this into graph mode so you can see how the program flows. So if we right click and press graph view, IDA arranges it into these nice little graph for you where all the jumps are split into the two different paths that the jump could take. So in this case, if this jump is not successful, it goes to here. If it is successful, it goes along the green line up here. And just having a quick look through the code, you can see a couple of things. There's something here that says move offset message into ECX. Well, this is something inside the data section for the program. And I just helpfully put it there as a comment there for you. So let's go and have a look at the data section for the program. So if we go to view, open subviews, and then choose segments, and then double click on the data section. This will show us all the data that's inside this particular program. And you see we've got two main bits of data which are referenced inside the program. The first is what's called message. It's actually just the word hello world, followed by a character which is actually the new line character, and the string, or the string of text, is terminated by a zero byte. This is quite common, they're called null terminated strings, and you'll see it more and more and more. And there's a second symbol called message secret. And if we look at it, IDA hasn't been able to convert it into text, so it doesn't really know what it is. If we scroll down, it's just a load of hex characters. But right at the end is a zero, so it suggests it might be a string at some point. So let's go back to the start function. And we we'll scroll at the top, and we're going to run IDA and stop it on the very first instruction. Drag things down a bit. So you can see we've got our stack on the right hand side, we've got our sort of hex editor here where we can go to any memory location that we want to and actually have a look and see what's actually there. We've got our registers on the right and here is our code in the middle here. I'm just going to scroll down to the current instruction which we're at and you'll see this instruction here is the current instruction which we're, we're executing. Now remember, when a program first starts, the operating system puts on the stack the command line arguments for the program. And it does it like this. The first thing that you will take off the stack is the number of command line arguments. And then e after that, you'll take each of the command line arguments off that will pass to the program. The very first command line argument is just the name of the program. So there is always one command line argument, and that's the name of the program. If there are other command line arguments, then obviously you'll see more. So in this case, the very first instruction for the program pops a value off the stack and puts it into EAX. And if you look in the stack here, it's just the number 01, which means that there were no command line arguments. All we've got is the name of the program and no other command line arguments. Actually, this here is the memory address for the very first command line argument, aka the name of the program. And if we go to that in memory, bfdd7587, you'll see there's the name of the program which we're currently running. So that's just the memory address for where the string of text is describing that particular argument. So let's pop the first argument off. F7. So EAX now contains 0, 1. And then we say compare EAX to the number 2. Well, it doesn't equal 2, so that, that compare fails. And if it does fail, we jump to something called no secret. Well, the clue here is it doesn't print out the message. And then we just move in the hello world message into the ECX register, or rather the memory address of the hello world string, wherever it is. And then we call the print function to actually print out to the screen and the program exits. So there's a clue here. The the label is called no secrets, so that means that no secret message is printed out. But our original jump for a comparison there was compare the number of arguments to two, if not jump to no secret. There's another there, jump to no secret. And in the middle here is some sort of loop where it references message secret and then goes around on a loop doing something. So let's go back a step. The program clearly expects there to be at least one command line argument. So Let's stop the program. And give it one, one command line argument. So we'll set a command line argument to one, two, three, four. And again, we'll run our program through to the first cursor point. Run to cursor. Yes. And you can now see on the stack we've got the number 2, which means there are two command line arguments. So there they are, that's the memory address for the first two command line arguments, the name of the program, and our 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's go to those in memory so we actually see where they are. BFBD2582. So 
there's the name of our program and there's the first command line argument and they're all separated by null characters you'll see there okay so let's step through our program now f7 ex now contains two so this compare is going to succeed so we're not going to jump to no secret we're then going to take something else off the stack so this is going to be the name of the program this is this bit here hello hello world that's the memory address that's taking off the stack we're going to ignore that and then we're going to take the next thing off the stack which is the address for one two three four and then we're going to do a comparison we're going to take the value in eax which is the the last value we took off the stack and if you look in the eax register there it is and that's just the memory address for one two three four now remember these square brackets mean look at the value in eax and treat it as a memory address and go and access the stuff that's at that memory address so in this case the the, um, op the, the the processor is going to look at the EX registers. There's the memory address. It's going to go to that memory address, which is just there. And it's con con going to compare the contents with this in hex. Well, this is two bytes in hex, 42 and 41. Not quite sure what they are, but it's comparing those two bytes there to that value there. Well, you can see our ones are 32 and 33. Well, if we right-click on this, IDA will present the data in a different format, and we can click on. Uh, the ASCII characters there, and we can see it's the letters B and A. Well, ours aren't the letters B and A, it's 1 and 2. So F7, that compare fails, and again we jump to no secret and go to the end of the program. So we skip over our decryption sequence there. So we now know the command line arguments need to be BA, but because of the way the processor works, they actually need to be in the opposite order. They actually need to be AB as a command line parameter. I've given you a link to this, it's called the Little Indian is the way the, the uh, processor ordered the bytes. So let's change our command line options. AB. Again, run through to the first instruction. Yes. I want to step through. We've got two command line arguments. Yes, that succeeds. We take the name of the program off the stack. We take the first command line argument off the stack now, which is our AB. Just go to this in memory. So we're going to go to that address there in memory. So go to BF80D59E. So there's our AB there. So we're now comparing the address in the AX register. We're going to go to that address and compare whatever's at that memory address with BA. Well, uh, remember what I said, the bytes are in reverse order. So that's going to succeed now. So we're going to do a comparison there. That jump fails now, and now we're going to start dealing with the secret message. So we're going to move the offset in memory of message secret into the ECX register. And if you hover over it, you can see there's those bytes that we saw when we looked at the data section. So let's get this up in the hexo. So we're going to go to that memory address in here on the bottom. So it's 80490F5. So there's our hello world, but we're down one line. So here's our message our encrypted message here. So we've got that in the ECX register. We don't really need to know what this loop does, but we're just going to step through it. And you can see as we step through it, it's slowly decrypting the data at message secret for us in memory. I'll keep running around a few more times. It says the secret message is Sheldon. How does this loop work? Well, we move the memory address of message secret into ECX. We've got a loop counter, EBX. And we go through, we take the memory address of the secret plus the counter, which is zero the first time round, and we XOR whatever that byte is with Nortex AA. And we keep going around until we uh, encounter a null byte, which signifies the end of the string. So it's basically going through our secret message and XORing all those bytes we saw in the data section with Nortex AA to decrypt them. A very crude form of XOR encryption. Um, we finish through, you'll see the secret password is Sheldon. Sheldon. And that's it, and that's how to solve the Hello World Crypt example.